Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. What have we got? Looks like it's time to get in the engine bay and give this little Perkins a service. Just gonna change the gearbox oil, change the motor oil, and then I'm just gonna start working my way around the motor and just probably work my way to the water pump, the water system, heat exchangers, lines, and whatever I can find that uh, we can service or update or make for some happy sailing. Just drained out the gearbox, I'm gonna fill that up and then I'm gonna warm the engine up, drain the engine oil out, change the filters, change the fuel filters. Got lots to do, get to know this Perkins motor. Thanks to Paul, um, I have a pump and I'm able to reach in. It just makes this sort of work really easy. I am gonna change this. It's a bucket pump I got from West Marine. I'm actually gonna mount this in there and the lines will be all set up ready for use. But at the moment, due to a few things, it's uh, just easy to use the bucket side of things for the moment. Most, a lot of people just use the bucket and that's it. I can empty and fill with this pump. Hard to access spots, it's easy to drain. And I'll show you how we're gonna set it up in the end, you'll see. I'm gonna show you how we used to do this on Catalpa because it was not this easy. This is making life very easy. Mind you, there's nothing wrong. On Catalpa we had a pump set up. The reason I did uh, choose the electric is that there was a manifold set up just to pretty much self-drain. The manifold needs a little bit of work, that's why I'm just going to use the bucket for now. Yeah, so this wasn't a priority like on the, on the list at all, but because Lee went in to do the oil a few days ago and found out that that was all hooked up the way it was, we decided that's the way we're going to go. Yeah, you want servicing to be easy because it's not something you want to neglect. It's easy and clean. So thank you Paul, again. Cheers, mate. Wow, that was simple. So that's our gearbox oil. Look at that, we put the torch on there and you can see where it is. Can't see where it is. See where it is. Not a lot, it's very close. Thing is with this, if we had too much or too little, I can just take it back out. <laughs> Thing with this transmission oil is you've got to get your dipstick really clean. Because it's so clear on the stick, it's really hard to see. Just over the line, that's where it was. All right, so it's just over the full mark. So by the time it sucks up oil through those lines, I'd say it'll be running just on the just on the line. That's that. We've done our gearbox, and this was the contraption we had for the gearbox. It just goes into the um, where the dipstick is where the gauge is on the gearbox. That's what I was feeding into the end. So this will be on a manifold inside mounted at a later date so I don't have to disconnect and reconnect for engine oil or gearbox oil. I'll move that out of the road. If you were to just do a service kit and have a service tub like this, which is a great idea, the only reason I'm actually gonna mount this is because it's all set up for a manifold and a pump to be installed. If it wasn't, I'd be probably quite happy just to use the bucket. We've used a pump for the last eight years, so it's a bit of a luxury having a pump. Either way it all works. So this is part of our manifold here where the oil is drained from and the manifold's been removed. So I'm just gonna unscrew this cap and I will screw our pump on. So now that is connected to the sump of the engine. Pretty much as soon as I turn the button on, this is a dual pump obviously, it goes one way or the other. And I haven't plugged it on so it's not gonna pump. <laughs> you give me a minute, walk away. Do you want a cup of tea? Back in the day. <laughs> so you preheat the engine, it thins out the oil, makes it a little bit easier on whoever the pump is, whether it's you or the uh, pump. We're fancy now. We are fancy. Nothing but the best for Catalpas. I didn't time that, but you can hear it bubbling now. It took, it took a minute 55. Oh wow, minute 55 guys, and if it's anything like Catalpa's engine, and it should be pretty close, I think it's about 7 litres. It's easy. We're going to empty that bucket and then Lee's going to run the new oil back into the engine. And that's it, it's your service, change the filters. Easy peasy, would it take you 4 minutes? Yeah, that's pretty quick isn't it? <laughs> so if you actually 
roll your head around here, guys. Oh, roll your head. Okay, ready, everybody? As you come here around the corner, my oil filter really? has actually been mounted on the wall. So it's been pulled away. They're having the oil filter actually mounted on the engine like they normally are for ease of access. You barely need to go into the engine room and you can access the filter from there. So that's a good thing? That's a bloody good thing. Uh, good job, mate. I don't have to get around the engine and try and work out how to get the filter off. It's just pretty much reach your hand in there and Bob's your uncle. This boat is all about ease. Oh, it'll be a lot easier when we're finished. <laughs> there is a lot. Is this the fuel filters right here? Yep, so they're Bang, the rake they're calls. right there! The dual rake don't even have set to up. go inside the door. So as soon as we've done that, I actually would have liked to, before we started the engine, changed all the filters out, but I was a little bit anxious and wanted to know that the engine was running. So um, I'll do that now after we do the oil and I'll move on and do the fuel filters. If there's a problem, this guy will solve it. If something's not working properly, properly, he doesn't sleep until it does. It's very, very good quality to have. He, uh, if I have a problem with anything, it annoys him so much he has to fix it. I'll actually measure it exactly so I know how much and I'll write that down. Is this a down. different gearbox to Catalpas? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had a Paragon in the last one and um, yeah, this one's Borg, Wagner, I think, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I don't know. So what have we got here, guys? Just sort of guess. Oh, look, we're in America. I'll try and talk the American lingo. Talking in gallons here. These must be a gallon. Roughly, we work in litres in Australia. This metric imperial thing I'm going to have to get used to. This foreign inches and driving on the wrong side of the road and... Walking, I'll get there. Walking on the wrong side of the path, even. Yeah. It's not just driving. <laughs> I gotta do a I gotta do an equation to work out every measurement, but a good exercise for the brain. Six, seven litres, yeah, so it's around the same as Catalpa. So is that easier parts to get for this gearbox? Like our glass gearbox was a bit of a nightmare. This one's better. Um I don't know. Uh it's a very common gearbox, so Borg Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> This doesn't sound right, does it? Here's a velvet drive. I don't know guys, we haven't had one, so anyone that's had one, let us know what you think of them. Doesn't appear to have any leaks over the gearbox. The rear main seal doesn't seem to be leaking. The oil was really clear, so it's not burnt. So with gearboxes, generally if it's been burnt or thrown into reverse or forward, quickly and it's slipped and burnt or revved really hard or whatever it may be and it gets burnt you'll generally see the oil will be darker and if it's darker and then you can actually smell the oil and it's burnt i know that's not good so in our case the oil was clear had no odor to it no smell so that's a good sign uh yeah let's get a little bit more in which is close there's the full line there just let that settle for a minute a minute a minute, a minute. I've got all live wires behind me. All these are going to need cover plates, so I'm just a little bit nervous. Don't lean back. It already looks Can't way wait. better. I can actually move in here. I've just got the floor removed because I'm going to replace the whole floor. It was all just pieced together really roughly. Yeah, so it needs a little bit more, darling. More to that. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Right on the money. Don't want to overfill it, but what I will do, um, I'm not sure of the system, I haven't done it before, so I'll uh, run the engine, make sure it all cycles through the, uh, the oil filter and everything's all full, and I'll take another reading. And it may need a little more. And On Catalpa 1, we didn't have the luxury of our oil filter at a working height. I think this is a great idea. This is just, they've extended away from the engine so instead of trying to work down beside the engine, generally in boats under 50 foot, they can be a little bit challenging some spots. So you can actually um, raise the oil filter so it's at a workable height. That just makes life easy. Lefty loosey, righty tidy, as we say, and uh, off the oil filter will come. Oh, that's on so tight. Oh, wow. It's actually, it is, it's probably been a while since this was changed, but Generally filters, you'll only need to get them to hand tight and if anything just a quarter of a turn. There's no need, so there's a rubber o-ring on there, there's no need to over tighten these. This has either been on here for a long time and it's sort of the rubber's dried out. Um, but yeah, that's, oh, it's so tight. 
So that's our filter off. This is gonna vary from everyone's engine. Bigger engine, more oil, more hours. Little engine, fewer hours. So for us, I like to do on it about every 100 hours. Uh, in this case, it's been sitting a while. I'll probably do it 50 hours and then I'll change the oil and then I'll go for my 100 hours um, there on. Some people do 150, some people do 200. I think for what it's worth, an oil filter and oil, it's a 10 minute job. Yeah, you keep your oil good, you're gonna get the hours out of your engine. You have no problems, hopefully. Uh, the oil ring here, when you do remove your oil filter, make sure there is an oil ring on here. If it's not on here, it'll be stuck to the housing and you wanna remove that, because if you don't and you screw your new one on, this will crinkle up on the old one and you'll have a major oil leak within say a couple of minutes you'll dump all your oil into your bilge and you don't want that do we matthew everyone's position of filter is different this one here is vertically so i'm actually gonna give it a little hand and i'll fill up the new filter full of oil and then i'll screw it on for dumping the oil on this engine you'd want to release this first as soon as you release the pressure all the dirty oil will drop out of the lines our new oil filter will fill up with oil, screw back on, run the engine, I'll stop it, and I'll just test the level again. Bloody easy. you got to know how to do this stuff. For me, I like to use the Perkins ones for a couple of dollars more. It's what they're designed for. So I think anyway, I could be wrong. Some people say they're all the same. We're going to rub a little bit of oil on this O-ring. Generally, whatever fluid's in here, so if this was a diesel filter, I'd lubricate that with diesel. This being an oil filter, I'm going to use oil and so on. I'll put the date on this. I will log it on the computer, but just for a quick reference in the daily morning check, when you check the oil before you um, get going, you can also just pop over and see how many hours and what date you actually done this. So for us, it'd be six months or 100 hours. I'll tighten this up hand tight and then I'll just go a quarter turn. So next time I go to release it, it's not gonna be nowhere near as tight as what it was and it doesn't need to be that tight. 13th of the 7th, 20. 20. 2020. 20. What are we? 22. Yeah. Wow. And I don't actually have the hours at the moment, so I'll go on at a later date. So it takes quite a fair bit of oil. Generally, it just helps the flow of the oil go through. It's not going to drop the oil too much. So the oil setting at the moment is pretty full, depending on if you fill this up or not. Oil around that ring. Beautiful. I'm just going to put that on there. Make sure it just goes, starts off nice and square and easy. Some people just do it hand tight like that. Probably all right. I just like to give it one little nip. A quarter of a turn. Job done. We're gonna turn it over, we'll run it for a minute. We'll check that nothing's leaking anywhere, especially on an engine. Um, just start your engine after your service and you run your eye around. Just make sure you've either put your plug in or your caps on or this is, hasn't been cross-threaded or the o-rings right everything seals um, just run your eye over it there's a lot talking about running an eye over an engine while we're in here Sarah's got the camera obviously there's wires and stuff hanging everywhere but apart from that I've cleaned up half the wires so we can see the engine now but a common thing and I've seen this in so many people's boats is rub marks on pipes, on lines, on fuel lines, on control lines, on everything. If you've got a, an item that is rubbing like this on a motor, whether it be a pipe, a control line or whatever, if you actually run your eye over your engine, if anything is rubbing with the vibration of the motor, it's only a matter of time before it'll wear through and it'll dump water, oil, fuel, lose your control line, open a line up to corrosion, so on so it's not a bad idea to have a good look around your whole engine while it's running and make sure nothing is rubbing and if so put some packing put a bit of tube zip ties tie it back do whatever you got to do so there's no rubbing of any parts on the engine because they will wear through see down here i'm gonna move back i don't want to get electrocuted okay don't you move onto the wall then otherwise i'm not gonna touch <laughs> it. Oh, <shit. laughs> Anyway, this is our water pump down here, so, and you can actually put your finger in here. So there's a little bit of oil in here. Um, generally, if the seals go, you're either gonna get oil coming from the engine out, or you're gonna get water coming and dropping out there. So I'm gonna remove this pump. It's a Jabsco pump. Um, look, I could play around with it myself, but I'm in America. I have the luxury of trades, services, um, 
sure it's going to be a little bit more, but like someone working on something every day that they know, and I don't want that to fail, and I want to um, just get someone that knows what they're doing, that does it every day, and I'll send this away. So it's not leaking. It's a little bit of oil under there. It's not gushing out water. It's not gushing out oil. It's just one of those things that it's only a matter of time before it will fail. So I know if I service that now, I'm, I'm going to have a lot more trouble free sailing. Uh, what else have we got going on over here? New starter um, motor's on. So I've put a new starter motor on. The solenoid was burnt out. The wires are all a bit dodgy. I just pinned these wires over here the other day. Um, you can see there's a crack in that control cable. Yeah, so that's our acceleration cable that gives the engine revs from the helm. So there's a split in that. So chances are it's a bit corroded, it's been split, it's old. Um, I'm not going to take the chance. It's still all working, nothing's broken, but I'm going to replace that along with the gear shifter cable. Because we have had them fail in the past, guys, and it's not good when you're coming into a marina and you go to put it into reverse and your cable snaps. So we don't, we, we want to avoid that one. Lesson learned. So lesson learned. Um, I like to keep these cables looking pretty new. So yeah, I'll service the water pump, I'll replace the cables, and I'm going to start with this fuel filter here. On our old engine, it was a real pain to bleed, so I'm not sure how this engine will go. We will soon find out. But the idea is, is just to remove the fuel filter, replace it with a new filter, replace all the O-rings that come with the fuel filter. Pretty much the way you pull it apart, you put it back together. Yuck. Look at the bottom of that. That's the bottom of the tray and it's full of goop. I just let this drain a little bit. I just don't want to remove my little tray while it's still dripping. Eliminate as much diesel mess as possible. We'll come back to it. I'll just let that drip out a little bit. It's obviously there's an internal rubber. It's very uh, hard to get off. It usually should fall off. Uh, inside there'll be a little o-ring up underneath here so i'll get a mirror in a minute and i'll get my pick again it's one of those things you don't always change or a lot of people don't but in this case this was really it's been a long time and that little o-ring that seals off here is obviously pretty old and sad try and minimize this diesel mess so again guys this is usually a pretty quick job this hasn't been done in a long time there's my new fuel filter There'll be a new O-ring here, and an O-ring top and bottom, and here's the O-ring kit. And this little O-ring in the middle will be the one up inside that you can't see. So a lot of people don't change those out, but in this case today, I'm going to, because that was really welded itself in there. But I must say, on my diesel engine in the last boat, I probably changed it twice in eight years. I wasn't too phased on that, again each to their own. Alright guys, just a quick little look. That was the bottom fuel filter housing. I'll just show you quickly, but I'm going to give this a little bit better of a clean so you don't sit here watching me clean for the next hour. You can see it's just very dirty in there. It's mission fail. Trying to remove an O-ring. It is hard as a rock. And my little picks just broke. And you can't go shoving anything up in that hole. Because you don't want to scratch the surface that it's sealing against. What happened there? Oh, this one's sharp. Just got stabbed. Wasn't ideal using this pick, but it actually done the job. And this rubber is super hard. There was no stretch left in it. My finger's bleeding now. I poked myself with the poker. Usually this is a one second job, but that hasn't been changed out for probably 20 years. So there you have it. So there's my new little O-ring that's nice and flexible and new. And that'll seal in there once it goes on to a shaft. Like I say, guys, I'm just going to put a little bit of diesel on this. Make sure this goes on. Beautiful. Let's have a look. Just slip straight on. We have a new O-ring on there, so that should slide on. Ah, what a mission. Sometimes things are really easy and sometimes they're really hard. That'll seal the bowl off. And then we have a new O-ring seal the top off but that o-ring didn't come out okay so there's another o-ring just underneath here which is this top o-ring which i'm going to remove and replace with a new one i'm assuming that's going to be super hard too okay there's our old one that one's actually not as bad as the the o-ring that was 
in the middle. Right, so I found another little O-ring. I don't know if you can see it. I put it on my dirty nail. That's what happens. You get dirty nails when you're in the workshop. Very uh, distorted and cracked and brittle and old and yuck. So I've just replaced this one too. That's under the bolt. Again, these things don't need to be replaced that often, but this has been years. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. I've also just cleaned out the bowl. I've just used a bit of, well, in this case, I've got parts cleaner. You could use a bit of carby cleaner or whatever you like. And I've just doused it all with diesel and um, gave it a rinse out with diesel. So that's what it is. I've got the other O-ring there. I'll just drop that in the diesel too. Put that back together, this back in here. And that's roughly the assembly. So this bolt will come through and attach itself inside there in the housing. And uh, we'll just have to try and fill all this up. If I had access to this, I would sort of hold this firmly and prime it with diesel. But being that it's two piece, it's just too messy. So I'm gonna set this up and I'm just gonna pump away on the diesel pump on the other side of the engine until this is full and starts to overflow. Uh, again, if you've got a de uh, an engine with a fuel pump, turn your fuel pump on and it'll fill up. Again, everyone's different. Everyone's got a different setup. I've just installed the filter. I've tightened that on. So now I want to fill this up. Like I said, if I had room, I would have actually primed the filter out here and put it on, but I wasn't going to get messy. I'm going to turn the fuel line on now and I'm just gonna prime away until I fill the bulb up. So I've just used the lift pump around the other side of the engine. We've primed it up. I've just tightened that screw up now. That should be okay. If it's not, I'll have to bleed the system if there's air in it. We'll see how it goes when we start it. Generally doesn't take that long, but it is what it is. Leave it at that for now. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff and above and more if you like. Thanks for watching. Action. Is that right? <laughs>